In this video, we will show you the operation of cable tray and conduit selection module of Sizer Electric. We will describe the process to size a cable tray or conduit consisting in three steps. First, enter your project circuits as shown in the conductor's video and review the information of the standards section. Second, create a conduit and a cable tray cross section and third, Assign your circuits to the cable tray or conduit to select the width or diameter. Finally, we will print the different reports. First, let us review the information of the standard section. To do this, select the option View in the main menu and then select Standards or directly click on the Standards icon in the toolbar. This will open a primary window. Next, select the Conduits and Cable Stray tab. Here you will define the fill factor required for your conduits and cable trays. For example, if the project specification indicates you should keep 20% space for circuit growth, define the fill factor as 80%. This way the cable tray or the conductor will fill up 80% and will keep 20% for future growth. Although the National Electric Code defines a wide variety of cable tray widths, it is common that the project specification limits the minimum and maximum cable tray widths. For example, 12 inches as the minimum and 36 as the maximum cable tray width. A similar condition is applicable to the conduits. In this frame you should select what will be the minimum diameter to be selected by the software and the maximum conduit diameter allowed in the project. To select the cable tray width, the code allows to have a common electrical grounding conductor, or EGC, of the maximum size of the group of circuits with derivations for every circuit or equipment grounding conductor for each circuit. In this frame, you should select the number of EGCs to be used for the cable tray width sizing. First condition allows you a single EGC for all the circuits in the cable tray and the second one uses EGC for every conductor increasing the cable tray width. Press the OK button to validate the information and close the window. Then you should create a cable tray cross section. In the cable tray network, a cross section is represented by a specific point where you want to define the cable tray width due to the change in the conductors installed. To create a new cable tray cross section, Select the option View, and then Cable Trays and Conduits, and in the submenu, select Capture. An alternative way is to press the Cable Tray and Conduits icon in the toolbar. This will show you a grid. Each record in this grid represents a cable tray cross section or a conduit. You can add, delete, edit, or filter the records in the grid using the icons in the grid toolbar. Select the icon Add in the toolbar to create a new cable tray cross section. This will open a primary window with the information to define a cable tray cross section. Type the cable tray tag in the name field. Then select the cable tray in the type combo box. Here you can select to enter a cable tray or a conduit. Type the length of this cable tray section in meters. The fill factor will show you the default value defined in the standard section, but you can customize the filling for this cable tray by checking the checkbox and typing the maximum electrical fill required for the cable tray or conduit. The notes text box allows you to enter a brief description of the section under analysis if needed. Select the cable tray type and the material used for the cable tray construction. By adding different segments, you can create a modeling of your cable tray network. You can keep your modeling as simple or as complex as you need. The segment type allows you to define each section of the cable tray network. Let's define a section as a straight one. Type the cable tray height and let's remember that the cable tray height is mechanical consideration according to the cable's weight and the span between supports. Finally, if you want the cable tray to be sized according to the cables installed, leave the user selection box unchecked. If you have a predefined cable tray width and you want the software to calculate the filling based on the conductors installed, check the user selection box 
and in the combo box, select the predefined cable tray width. Press OK and validate the information and close the window. If you want to create a conduit instead of a cable tray, press the add icon on the grid toolbar that will show you the same primary window. Type the conduit tag in the name field and then select conduit in the type field. Then define the length for the conduit and also the fill factor. Then fill in any notes and any general information. You can notice that the section under features changes to define the conduit. Here you should select the conduit type, the conduit material, and the conduit coating. If you want to define the conduit size and you want the application to compute the conduit filling, click the user selection checkbox to enable the combo box, and then select the diameter. If you want the application to select the conduit diameter, leave this box unchecked. Press the OK button to validate the information and close this window. When you create a new conduit or cable tray, those will be added as a new record on the grid. You can manage the records with the options in the grid toolbar. Notice that in the extreme left column there is an icon for a conduit and an icon for cable trays. When there is a check sign over these icons, it will indicate that the conduit or cable tray has circuits allocated for its sizing. Now is the time to select the conduit diameter or cable tray width. To do this, we need to select the option Views in the main menu and then Cable Trays and Conduits. And then select Circuit Allocation or Conductor Allocation icon in the toolbar. This will show the window for circuit allocation into conduits and cable trays. Let's get familiar with this window. The Available Conduits and Cable Trays section shows the tags of all the cable trays and conduits entered in the Capture section. Once we allocate circuits in the cable tray, this area will show the fill percentage, the width or diameter selected, the available cable tray width or conduit diameter, and the total conductors included in the cable tray. The Projects area shows cable trays and conduits used in the analysis. In this area, we will integrate the conduits and cable trays to later allocate circuits in them. This area shows the circuits available to be allocated in the cable tray. The circuit routing area lists out all the circuits entered in the conductor selection module. When a circuit is selected and highlighted in this list, the area aside will show the specifications, load type, and the circuit voltage. This list will show all the cable tray or conduits where the circuit was allocated. Let's start with the cable tray sizing process. Select the tag of the cable tray you want to analyze from the list named Conduits and Cable Trays. This will appear highlighted in the list. Now press the button with the arrow pointing to the left to assign the cable tray to the project area. The project area works as a file explorer with the same hierarchical principles. Here you can have a cable tray or a conduit at the same level to identify those are different. Or you can define a hierarchy allocating one cable tray into another to denote these cable trays are mechanically connected. Conduits hierarchically dependent from a cable tray will denote trips to download circuits from cable trays to the loads using conduits. Once the cable tray appears in the project area, you will notice that when you highlight the tag of the cable tray, in the Available Circuits section appears a list of all the circuits entered into the Conductor Selection module. To allocate a circuit into a cable tray, be sure that the cable tray is highlighted in the project area and then select the circuit in the Available Circuits list. Note that when you select a circuit tag in this list, all circuit relevant information will appear in the area side for circuit referential information. Press the button with the arrow pointing to the left you will see that the circuit disappears from the available circuits list and is now shown in the hierarchy of the cable tray. This represents that the circuit is now installed in the cable tray. Note that after allocating the circuit, the area in the upper left is updated showing the cable tray width selected, the percentage field, and the cable tray width available. Here you will also identify the number of total conductors allocated in the cable tray. Let's repeat the process to allocate another circuit. Select the cable tray in the project area, 
Then select the new circuit to be allocated from the available circuits area. Press the left arrow button or double click on the circuit and you will see that the second circuit tag now appears under the same cable tray. At the same time, the progress bar representing the cable tray fill will be updated as well as the number of total conductors. Also notice that the cable tray icon appears to be checked in the conduits and cable trays list. This check mark indicates that the cable tray has now circuits allocated on it. Now let's add a conduit using the same allocation process, but now we need to define if the cable tray and the conduit are interconnected. Let's assume that the conduit is a derivation from the cable tray to take the circuit to the load. To represent this dependency, we need to select the cable tray in the project area and now select the conduit from the conduits and cable trays list. Press the left arrow button and now we will see that the conduit is hierarchically dependent on the cable tray representing a derivation. Now to allocate the circuit into the conduit, we need to select the conduit in the project area. And when it is highlighted, select the circuit that will derivate from the cable tray through the conduit. Once the circuit is selected, press the left arrow to allocate the circuit into the conduit. This will show the circuit hierarchically dependent on the conduit in the project area. The area in the upper left will show the conduit diameter, electrical filling percentage, and the available area with the number of conductors installed in the conduit. To select cable trays or conduits without any dependency, you will need to select the project label icon at the top of the project area and assign the conduit and cable trays with the procedure described before. This will show cable trays and conduit shown at the same hierarchical level indicating that there is no relation or dependency between them. Cable trays and conduits can be collapsed and expanded for easy project comprehension. Now if you look in the circuit in the circuit routing list and you select it you will see that the circuit information is shown and in the installed in list the cable tray where the circuit is routed will appear. You will also see that all the cable trays and conduit links are summarized at the bottom of the list. If the sum of the segment links is longer than the conductor length used for the conductor selection, the sum of the label will appear in a red color, indicating that the conductor data should be revised. If this label is shown in black, the length of the sections does not exceed the length used for the conductor selection. A relevant topic here is that when you update the load information in the conductor selection module and that it affects the conductor size, the conduit diameter and the cable tray width will be updated as the conductor's area is modified. These are the basics to manage the conductor allocation module. Now you can print a tabular report of all the cable trays and conduits as well as the conduits allocated in cable trays by selecting the option Report in the main menu and then selecting the option Cable Tray. This will show three different reports available. The first report will show the list of the cable trays and conduits in your project and the filling computation. The second report will show you the circuit general information and the list of the cable trays or conduits where the circuit is routed. And finally, the third report will show the list of circuits installed in each conduit or cable tray. Select the report required. A window will appear showing filtering fields and the heading to customize the report. Define your filter criteria and press the OK button to show you the tabular report. These are the basic steps to manage the cable tray and conduit selection module. For detailed information, read the software manual or visit help files included in the software in the option Help of the main menu. Thanks for your attention and we recommend you see complimentary videos for conductor specifications and grounding grid design for a complete knowledge of the Sizer Electric software.